So earlier this month, factory workers at the Frito-Lay plant in Topeka, Kansas went viral after they went on strike and explained just how terrible the working conditions are at this particular factory. And the situation, it's not necessarily super surprising. And I don't think that this is an isolated incident. I think that this is happening across the country and we just don't know that this is the case. But what they describe here is absolutely inexcusable and every single person in america should condemn this because this should not be happening so as vice news explains many of the 850 workers at the facility say they work 84 hours a week with no days off workers are nominally supposed to work eight hour shifts but because of shortages workers are often forced to add an extra four hours before or after their shifts workers call these extended shifts suicides because they say the schedule kills you over time some workers haven't had a single day off in five months including saturdays and sundays now, just to put this into perspective, to work 84 hours every single week, that is extremely destructive, not just to your physical well-being, but to your mental health as well. The most that I ever worked in a week was 74 hours, so 10 hours less than these workers here. And it was almost like I felt like I was going insane. I almost had a nervous breakdown. It was incredibly destructive to my emotional well-being it was it was grueling but for them to deal with this every single week i mean this is uh, it's excruciating now i want to share some stories from the workers before i get to the reason why i'm talking about this story not just because it's important but because there's an update to the story that um i think people should know about the strike has concluded and they did reach an agreement now it's not a good agreement the terms i think are still more beneficial to frito-lay than to the workers but nonetheless i just really want to put things into perspective for you and explain how bad the situation is so there's a 59 year old frito-lay worker named mark mccarter who worked at frito-lay since he was 19 years old and he claims that even though he's worked there all this time he is still forced to work 12 hour shifts he's required to work 12 hour shifts seven days a week doesn't get a day off and he says he hasn't gotten a raise in a decade and explains this job wears you down it tires you it makes you mentally exhausted it plays with your mind some of these guys who work 12 hours a day every day are destroying their marriages they're destroying their families my wife passed away and i don't have a wife to go home to to say hey babe i'm only working eight hours tomorrow but a lot of these guys come in with the understanding that they'll be there for eight hours but then they got to call their wife wives and kids and say guess what it's not eight hours it's 12 hours and then i have to go back to work at 3 a.m now part of the reason why these workers at the factory have to work so hard is because of the high turnover rate uh they have a reputation that's bad in topeka for good reason and because of that people don't really want to work there and when they work there they end up quitting so that leaves the workers who are employed there having to deal with you know, an excessive amount of tasks. That's just, it's too much for them. They're they are overburdened. Uh, and on top of that, besides that story, which I think is, is going to be pretty common, there's a story from More Perfect Union. And I don't necessarily know that this is about the Topeka plant, but just to kind of show you how bad Frito-Lay is to their employees, one man named Brandon actually got injured on the job and he shares his experience. And this is honestly gut-wrenching. was using the dock door. You press the button and it automatically does what it's supposed to do. I got electrocuted. I was taken to the ER, but the emergency room they took me to was 45 minutes away. We passed four hospitals on the way to the hospital they wanted to take me to. And the reason it is is because they sign a contract with a certain hospital and a certain network. From the very next day after the accident, my husband was never the same. He was working really hard to even just get up on to the side of the bed. And usually he's like hops out of bed and he hurries up, puts his clothes on and he shoves food down his throat and he's out the door. You know, in 30 minutes, he was used to it. He was trained to do that in the service. When I say I was healthy as an ox, I was healthy as an ox. We just didn't have any answers. They said he should have been fine, but he wasn't. I didn't get any time off after the incident. Uh, I was... <sighs> I had to call off the next day as a sick day. I told you I was in pain. I told you it hurts when I walk. And it was like, okay, you know, are you gonna be here tomorrow? I was a site lead and I know what that entails. You're a leadership of the whole warehouse. So if you have to fill in, you have to fill in. I asked for 
some type of relief period because I was still obligated to work like picking cases and unloading trucks or rotating product on a forklift. I asked for a chair that I could probably, that I could sit in that would make me more comfortable while I'm doing my office work. They denied it. You're either 100% or you can't work. It just felt like they was just trying to push me out. Eventually I got an MRI by my primary doctor and he showed that I had two herniated discs in my back. And he was like, you shouldn't be doing anything. They could only fix it with surgery. And my husband still had to work this whole entire time. They had to remove two of the discs in my neck because they were bulging into my spinal cord. I wasn't getting enough fluid to my brain. If I didn't have the surgery, the doctor said any small fall or accident or something like that, and I would have been paralyzed from the neck down or dead. I still have to have surgery on my lower lumbar spine. From the moment that he couldn't work anymore and needed short-term disability, Frito-Lay abandoned us. I had to file for short-term disability and then long-term disability. Got approved for long-term disability, but that was months later. So no income coming in. That's a picture of the car. <laughs> we were driving. They require you to go to the doctor so many times, and the doctor has to say that you're in this condition over and over and over. But guess what? You don't have any insurance anymore through PepsiCo slash Frito-Lay because they cut you off. I had to pay for that out of pocket too. <laughs> Didn't have the money to do that. So guess what? I borrowed money or used credit cards or whatever I could. <laughs> I even took money on my kids. <laughs> we had to take from our children to live. Now, I'm not going to play the full video for you because I really want you to watch the full video from A More Perfect Union. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link to it down below. Also, I want you to check out Brandon's GoFundMe to help him fund the surgery that he needs, which obviously is going to be very, very expensive. Uh, but just to kind of give you the um, TLDR version of that story, if you don't want to watch that video, um, he was injured on the job because of no fault of his own. And then they still pressured him after he was electrocuted to show up to work. He uh, was then cut off, lost his insurance. They abandoned him. He decided to sue. And after that, then Frito-Lay tried to prove that he wasn't actually injured and was faking it. And they began stalking his family, taking videos of him and his children, all because they're greedy. They couldn't admit that the worker that was injured at their plant, at their factory... It was their fault that they're actually liable. This is such a cruel, disgusting company. And if you can, absolutely do not purchase Frito-Lay products. Now, I say that knowing that the alternative brands are probably not much better. But there has to be some level of accountability when companies treat their workers like this, this is a human rights violation. This is abusive. And it shouldn't just be that Frito-Lay factory workers get better working conditions, but the individuals responsible for this should be persecuted legally. This is abuse. This is borderline torture. But the dispute has essentially been resolved. And I say that because the strike ended, but workers, even though they got some benefits... It's really not that great. So as Maria Kramer of the New York Times explains, hundreds of Frito-Lay employees ratified a contract on Saturday, ending a nearly three-week strike over forced overtime and long hours that many workers had said pushed them past the point of exhaustion, union officials said. Paul Clem, a chief shop steward who has worked at the Topeka plant for nine years, said he has once worked three months straight without a day off. I missed a lot of time with my children when they were in high school because of the shift that I worked and the hours that I worked, he said. It's physically draining. Mr. Clem said the new contract guarantees one day off a week for workers, does away with forcing workers to take the suicide shifts and increases wages. He declined to provide precise numbers because he said he was not authorized to give that information. Karina Christensen, 
Union. A spokeswoman for the International Union declined to provide additional details of the agreement or say how the membership voted. One warehouse worker who has been at the plant for roughly two decades said there was more disappointment than happiness with the contract. The man who spoke on the condition of anonymity, fearful of retaliation from the company, I wonder why, said that many workers who crossed the picket line or voted to approve the contract did so out of need. Quote, a lot of people had to vote yes because they were running out of money and didn't have insurance, he said. So there you have it. Instead of working 12 hours a day, seven days a week, they're presumably going to be working eight hours a day, six days a week. It's an improvement, but this still obviously isn't enough. We need to be changing the terms of the conversation around work in the United States. Get out of this work ours ourselves to death mentality and start focusing on ourselves, human development, how to make human beings thrive. And we should be talking about a three to four day work week, not a six day work week as a success. But when you are in a late stage capitalist society where big money and employers have so much power over their employees and they're afraid to speak up for fear of retaliation, it's just... You're going to get situations like this. Even workers at Frito-Lay who have unions, that doesn't solve everything. Unions are incredibly important, and they probably wouldn't have even had this small victory had it not been for their union. But still, to do this, to work themselves to death, it's, it's borderline torture. Like, I'm trying not to be hyperbolic, but this is totally inexcusable, and it's all to produce chips and dip. It's uh, disgusting. We have this news, and then on top of that, Activision Blizzard is being sued for rampant sexual discrimination, misogyny, sexual harassment, and their response is basically Trumpian. I mean, companies are going to continue to behave this way unless you rein them in with legislation. This is totally unacceptable. 